Hey everybody, it's Christina Holloway here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about how to develop your executive presence as you deal with a problematic boss. Now, the area I chose for today's video centers around a boss who complains all the time. We're going to talk about four techniques you can use that will help you get out of reactive mode and stay in responsive mode as you deal with difficult situations like this because the more you can look at these situations as opportunities to develop your skills, the less they will seem like annoying problems that never go away. We're going to address that today. Real quick, if you enjoy this content and want to learn more about how to make power moves in your career, make sure to follow my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. Don't forget to download your free communication toolkit, which teaches you the five elements to communicate with impact. All right, so let's get started. Number one, focus on what's being said. In case you didn't know, complaining can take many forms. There's complaining about other people and their habits, a little like gossiping. There's complaining about how a program or project is progressing while feeling frustrated about how the project is mishandled. And then there's complaining about well, pretty much everything else, the petty stuff, complaining about things that cannot be changed or are so inconsequential that they feel like a waste of time just hearing about them. I can't believe we're having a lunch meeting at 1130 instead of noon. Can you believe they ordered coffee for everyone? I mean, what if someone doesn't want coffee? <laughs> then there's those famous last words right before you lose an hour of your day. I really need to vent to someone. So the first technique I'm sharing is to focus on what's being said and respond accordingly. Ask yourself, where are they complaining effectively? And then ask yourself, where are they complaining ineffectively? Focus on the areas that create opportunities for you to contribute to a solution. You may need to retrain your boss's habit of only complaining to you into a habit of sharing information for the ultimate goal of creating solutions so you both can move forward. If your boss wants to complain to you about coffee or a lunch break, <laughs> then you're welcome to answer with an I hear you as a way to validate their small stuff. We all blow off steam for silly reasons every once in a while. Okay, but listen for the complaining related to bigger things. I'm so sick and tired of Bob, our VP of HR, interrupting the meetings. Really? Wh why does that bother you? How would you rather the meeting go? What's the value of having Bob talk at the end of the meeting instead of the middle? Use this opportunity to draw your boss out of the superficial and into the specific. From there, you can find a way to create opportunities to add value-based solutions. Again, this is intended for you to make the most out of this situation. Number two, understand your role. Here's what I mean by that. You may have a boss who's developed a habit of coming to you to complain about everything, or you may have a boss who created a complaining dynamic with you from the start. Either way, you may be working with someone who's created an unhealthy dynamic with you. Here's the thing. People don't always complain to everyone around them, technically. At work, they will find the person who's most likely to listen to them or they will trap someone into that dynamic like an employee because they somehow learned to use this unhealthy dynamic to their advantage. Shockingly, these people have been successful with this technique in the past. This can very well be about your boss feeling comfortable putting you in this position to listen to their grievances. If that's the case, you need to understand your role. And we're not talking about you trying to change your role in this dynamic. That is not an easy task because without self-awareness, your boss will do everything to keep you in this dynamic. We're talking about you changing the way you respond in this dynamic. A person who complains outwardly is also someone who cannot problem solve by themselves. They're looking for a dynamic duo to work with them to get the best out of their situation. The problem is they end up stuck in the complaining stage. In that case, your best move is to start using prompts and action-oriented questions that help acknowledge the complaining on the one hand and move the conversation forward on the other hand. There's a duality to how you handle your boss. 
statements like if I'm hearing you correctly or from what I understand will help you reframe the complaining into presenting a realistic problem that you can then work on solving. Remember, you don't want to become a fixer, someone who always puts out fires. You want to be a problem solver. I have a video right here. Someone who moves situations to resolution as you contribute in a meaningful and measurable way. And quick warning here, in the beginning, the complainer will absolutely resist. No, you didn't get that right. Or you're not understanding the situation at all. Or you're just not listening to what I'm saying. Those things will come up because they don't want the dynamic to change initially. Number three, connect, don't transact. This comes from an HBR article, which I've linked below about developing executive presence by Joshua Ehrlich. And there's one sentence that stood out to me. Mindfulness helped her to clear her head so she could think strategically, which helped her influence more effectively. Let's take this situation that you have a boss who's complaining. Like I just mentioned, we want you to move from putting out fires reactive to creating solutions proactive. In this example, you want to be able to connect to your boss's pain point. What's really going on? What is your boss really trying to say? Complaining about the coffee or lunch break is actually about something else. If they're complaining about you to your face, it's still about something else. Usually a loss of control of the outcome to something. Staying in the moment and asking further questions until your boss calms down is a great way to use mindfulness. It's also a great way to illustrate how you manage problematic situations. Even an obvious question like, what would be a good solution here? allows you to create a space where you might be able to get your boss to switch gears from complaining to solving. Remember, you're actually trying to change this dynamic so your boss complains less, stops using you as a sounding board for every little thing, and starts seeing you as a partner in creating solutions. To do that, you're going to start leaning into your best strengths when using your executive presence. Managing your boss and your boss's expectations will help your boss see you as creating value and being valuable. People complain for basically three reasons. Things didn't go the way they wanted them to. Things changed at the last minute and it makes them uncomfortable. Or this outcome won't make them look good. Unpack all of that complaining into these three areas and you'll see where you can create solutions. Number four. Empathize, don't sympathize. Here's a great way to define your executive presence. This comes from another HBR article titled Deconstructing Executive Presence by John Benson, and I love this definition. Although executive presence is highly intuitive and difficult to pin down, it ultimately boils down to your ability to project mature self-confidence, a sense that you can take control of difficult, unpredictable situations, make tough decisions in a timely way, and hold your own with other talented and strong-willed members of the executive team. Write this down, pin it to your desk, and always remember this statement. When you start to see yourself through that lens, you'll then be able to imagine how anyone who complains to you is looking for a solution from you. You're now in charge of the situation and have more control over how the complaining person impacts your work output. In this instance, and I think in any instance professionally actually, you want to influence the conversation by empathizing more and sympathizing less. This is a communication habit that you can change immediately and get immediate results. It's the difference between saying, I feel so bad that they didn't move the lunch meeting. How could that have happened? Or saying, while I can see this is going to be inconvenient for you, I'm sure they had a good reason when they scheduled the meeting. Let's see what they have to say and figure out a solution. If you want to get a complainer to stop complaining at you, you need to stop feeding their neediness. In order to do that, ask yourself how your language, your decisions, and your actions feed into the dynamic that's become dependent. You don't need that. You're working on building your career by contributing to some great projects and assignments. If you have to take time out of your day to babysit your boss's every whim, you won't get much done. The best employees know how to manage up. 
And this is a great example of how you can do that by correcting a problematic relationship with your boss. So this one is not easy. Changing a problematic dynamic with your boss is complicated. And if you suspect your boss of strange behavior or overly dependent behavior, your best bet is to change the dynamic into something as professional as possible while you explore other options. Taking all of this together, it's important to understand that behaviors like this have a deeper symptom to them. A person that reaches out to you habitually has developed an attachment to you. Complaining, even if they're complaining about you, is sometimes a way for someone to create a connection. And when it involves someone important in your career development, like your boss or even a stakeholder, then it becomes tricky to correct the relationship without losing the trust. Being able to look at this as a professional challenge in creating productive work relationships helps you move away from the, this is so annoying feeling. Once you get grounded and find mindfulness, you'll suddenly understand where your value lies in this situation and how to use your influence to move it forward. All right, so that's it for my video on how to use executive presence to deal with a complaining boss. Let me know in the comments down below if you used any of these techniques and how it worked for you. Feel free to share your experiences. I would love to hear more about them. Don't forget to download my free communication toolkit, which I provided in the link below. And if you've enjoyed watching this video and you found it helpful, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up by hitting that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you never miss another video from me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.